I'm pretty excited for today and that's for a couple reasons. The first is because I'm gonna take you guys along on an adventure for the first time in a while. And what I'm gonna do today is explore this little area of the Cascade Nash or the Cascade uh, region that we're in in the National Forest. And we love it here. This is quite honestly, our favorite place in the entire United States. And it's why we're in the Pacific Northwest so often. We just love it here. Sure, it's not like the most grandiose place. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, some national parks, well, many national parks, of course, are much more epically awesome than this area, but the Cascade Mountain Range, in our opinion, is just so consistently beautiful. It's, it is just epic in many ways and you'll see some of that here shortly because what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take, I'm gonna take one of the e-bikes and uh, go out to one of these viewpoints. There's like a rocky outcropping that is only accessible by us through our e-bike. Our truck can't get there because the National Forest has completely blocked off the forest road that leads to this lookout point. Um, you know, which the Forest Service does that when you know, they, they decide that they want the, like, nature to sort of reclaim this area, and they don't want people to be able to easily drive motor vehicles back there, um, you know, clear areas out for camping or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, we can still get there with our e-bike, even though we can't with our truck. And another reason I'm excited today is because I'm finally going to announce a new channel that I've started. It is called Flavor. Unbound and it is a cooking channel and uh, what I do in it is I'm focusing on easy meals um, Typically ones that are going to be like single skillet or one pot because you know We don't have a dishwasher and so I want to stick to things that dirty up as little amount of dishes as possible Because I have to hand wash all of them and then on top of that you guys know that we have a very very small kitchen And so the quicker and the easier and the less ingredients that uh, you know, a recipe takes to prepare, then the better for us. But uh, I'm, o I'm also going to be making sure to select ones that are delicious, that are very hearty, um, hopefully healthy. Uh, we're not gonna stick to super healthy meals all the time, but it would be nice to also, you know, get some hearty, healthy meals in there. Uh, and I have two videos up right now. One that is single skillet. Uh, both recipes are single skillet that I cook in it, and the other one uh, uses huckleberry berries uh, as the like primary ingredient because there are huckleberry bushes just everywhere uh, up on top of this mountain that we're camping on. So yeah, there'll be a link in the description below for you guys to go ahead and check out my cooking channel. Again, it's called Flavor Unbound. Please subscribe to it. I'm super excited about it and I would love to have as many of you along for, you know, the adventure that we're going to go on with our sense of taste on that channel. This is a solo adventure for me today. Ro is actually busy streaming today. And so if you guys are missing her by her not appearing in this video at all, then you should go check out her Twitch channel. You know, link right here. She streams live a, a lot, like three, maybe four times a week. So if you guys wanna hang out with her while she's streaming live, then definitely go check out her Twitch channel. So we've reached the point in the road that the National Forest is blocked off. You can see, you know, right here, 
there is just, you know, they built up a mound and they've put really large rocks in the way that you can't just push out of the way. This is pretty typical of what they do, like I said. Uh, when they want to just close off a road, like who knows, this was uh, probably a logging road long ago and uh, once the logging company was all finished, they, uh, you know, they didn't need to have anyone access that part of the National Forest anymore, so, you know, they just put stuff in the way to sort of close that off. Um, our truck definitely can't get over that because there's even a downed tree in the way. I don't know if the Forest Service downed that tree. Uh, that's the first time that I've ever seen a tree down in the way. It could be coincidence. Maybe it's not, um, but yeah, our electric bike though can get over that real nice and easy and get us to that lookout that I wanna go to. This part of the forest we're about to go into is so cool. It just looks like it hasn't been logged in a very, very long time. And you know, the trees are just so tall and beautiful. I just, I love this type of forest. It's like high elevation pine forest and I can even smell the, the piney smell from these trees on the wind. It is just gorgeous here. I love this area. What's funny is even though I don't think that this area has been logged in a very long time, you can tell by how well worn this road is after, you know, the mound that the Forest Service built up to block the road. It's still really well worn. So people still definitely get over this mound and continue on. I'm far from the only person that wants to get to this viewpoint. If you guys are curious about the e-bike I'm riding around today, it is an electric e-bike and I've got a link down in the video description below if you guys wanna check it out for yourself. Ro and I have had electric e-bikes for over two years now, and we absolutely love them. So if you've been considering getting an e-bike, I would highly recommend going with them. Um, the build quality is really good, and the bang for your buck that you get out of them, in my opinion, is just the best that you can get from an e-bike. And if you wanna learn more about these e-bikes, we've got an entire playlist of all the videos that we've made. Some of them explaining like all the features, everything that these things are capable of. So I'm not gonna go into all of that in this video. You can check those out and just learn everything you'd like to know about electric e-bikes. And this is where the forest road just ends, right at this pretty steep incline. Uh, so we have to leave the electric bike behind here and go the rest of the way on foot. Thankfully though, it's really not that far to the rocky outcropping, uh, that viewpoint. And what's really cool about it is it's right on a ridge line. And so once we get to the top of this incline right here, we're on the ridge of this mountain all the way out to the very point. And it is a pretty clear day today. There is a bit of forest fire smoke sort of hazing out the further away you look. So I'm hoping we're able to get a view of Mount Rainier. It uh, you know, might have its own clouds obscuring the view and the forest fire smoke just might be too thick to see something that far away. But if it's clear enough, then we just might get a view of the north face of Mount Rainier.
And this is why we love Washington State so much. These type of viewpoints are just all over the place and we're not in a national park. You know, you can just go out exploring if you're adventurous enough and find locations like this in the national forest. Ro and I have been to so many incredible viewpoints that you can, for the most part, just drive to uh, down a forest road. And sometimes, you know, you gotta walk a little extra way like this some more than others, but it's just, you know, these awesome, incredible viewpoints are all over the place. And it's, it's just so incredible here, you guys. I, I, it's hard for me to put into words just how much I love this state. I'm a little bummed though that Mount Rainier is for the most part obscured by, you know, a little ring of clouds that are hanging around just below the peak. Uh, but you can see the, you know, caldera of Rainier. You know, a little, a couple fun facts about that mountain is that it is the most prominent mountain in the lower 48 states in the United States. And you can really tell when you look at it, it's really cool. Um, you can't really see it from here because we're really far away from it. So there are a lot of mountain ridges in the way, but if you're closer to Rainier, like if you're in uh, Seattle and you look at Mount Rainier, there's just like nothing around it. It's, it's really low land. And then all of a sudden, as you get closer to Rainier, it just boom, just right up. It is such an incredible, imposing mountain. It, if you haven't seen it in person, you need to. It is incredible. And there's an entire national park devoted to it, Mount Rainier National Park. Though it is the most prominent, it's not the tallest, it's beaten out by four other mountains in the lower 48 states. Though when you see it in person, you would probably guess it as the tallest just because of how prominent it is. And also, not that long ago in geological terms, Mount Rainier popped its top too, similar to Mount St. Helens, but not quite as drastically. Uh, there is a feature, on. Uh, that is like next to the peak of Mount Rainier that is called Little Tahoma. And it's sort of like a pseudo peak of the mountain, if, if that's a word. I may have just made that up. But uh, that, uh, that uh, second prominence used to be a part of a once taller Mount Rainier. It lost quite a bit of elevation and um, yeah, Little Tahoma is sort of a remnant of what used to be um, the side of the mountain. But we're done at this spot, so we're gonna go back down, hop on the e-bike, and I'm gonna take you to another really awesome viewpoint. Check this out. There are so many huckleberry bushes here, like I said. All of the plants on both sides of this road are all huckleberry bushes and it just goes on for so long and fairly deep into the forest too. They're just everywhere and they are delicious. Like I said, be sure to check out my cooking channel, Flavor Unbound, because I cooked with all these wild huckleberries, or I should say I baked. There's a little oddity too, right off of this blocked off National Forest Road. And I want your guys' input on this, some help in figuring out what this wreckage might be. There's just a bunch of rusted steel parts and components just lying around on, like mostly in this uh, ditch. I don't know if this spot used to be a radio tower, a fire lookout tower, some type of mine. I have no idea, but if any of this just like left behind wreckage looks familiar to you guys, please let me know in the comments what you think this is because I would love to know. Ro and I have been puzzling over this for a while and we just have no idea what it could be.
And there it is, one of the most beautiful non-national park landscapes and viewpoints that I've ever seen. The Cascade Mountains you can see in all of their glory. They are so jagged and it's because they are so young. The Cascade Mountain Range is only about 15 million years old. And for comparison, the Appalachian Mountain Range is 250 million years old. The Sierra Nevadas, 80 million. And the Rocky Mountains, 70 million. So by comparison, this volcanically formed mountain range has not yet had the time to be eroded away by wind, rain, and other geological forces. And so they remain extremely pointed and jagged. Well, hi, sweet pea. Hey, sweetie girl. <laughs> you glad I'm home? Oh, hello, Butters. Hey, big kitty. Allie, hello to you too. Oh, even Min Bunny's coming up to say hi. You honey, tap back there. Oh, really? Hey, Ro. Hi. You streaming? <laughs> yep. Cool. Right. Having fun? I am having fun. Awesome. Did you have fun? I did. I had a great time. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. How was the ride? It was good. Good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right. Yeah. Thank you.